Well, Merry Christmas. This is day 360, part two. And we are in Revelation 1 and 2, and tomorrow we'll get into 3 and 4, uh, and I guess something like that. Um, we got to get at this. There's a lot of stuff, and I'm going to try to summarize it instead of just reading through a bunch of things for you, okay? So, um, I mean, I have a whole page of notes, and usually I only have four or five points, but there, all these are points, and I want to make sure we get this. So I think summarizing this is the best way. You need to read every word that is in here. So let, let's do a quick summary of the whole Bible. Quick. You have creation, before creation, where you have Jesus uh, being, the creation being made through Jesus. You have uh, Genesis and everything being created all the way up to Christ. Okay, and then you have all those things, the history back there. And then you have Christ being born and he dies. And then you have the church age, okay? And then you have the rapture. And after the rapture comes the tribulation. And the tribulation, you have a thousand year reign of Christ and all his people, which we'll talk about today. And then you have a new heaven and a new earth. So before the rapture, we have the church age. And really what's happening in Revelation 1, 2, and 3 is a letter being written to the churches. Okay, so stop right there. Let's read the description of what John sees in Revelation 1, 13 through 15. This is important. Uh, so starting chapter, or verse 12. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. So there's a lot of sevens in here, so just add them to your list. I saw seven gold lampstands and standing in the middle of the lampstands. Standing in the middle of the lampstands. So we have seven stars and seven lampstands. The lampstands represent seven churches. The stars represent the angels who are in charge of those churches. Or you could even say the, the priests, the pastors, the people leading. Uh, it does say angels, so I'm just going to go with a literal interpretation at the moment. Okay, so he saw the seven gold lampstands, and in between the seven lampstands, he sees Jesus, okay? Who is someone like the Son of Man, who is Jesus, okay? He was wearing a, gold, a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. Stop. So this is not just some random description or a subtle description. John is amazed at what he's seeing. And you go back to uh, other Daniel and other people that have seen the, uh, seen God and they're just, they just fall faint and they can't believe what they're seeing. So you got to get that in your mind. It's not just he's wearing a gold sash. It is a dazzling gold sash. It is something that is hard to describe. His feet are bro shiny bronze, like from a fiery furnace. His eyes are like flames of fire. Think about that. He is, this is John trying to describe those things. I don't want to dwell too much on this, but it's so important that we get that Jesus is in, a, in his greatest form that he could be in. And John gets to see this, okay? Um, verse 16, he held seven stars in his right hand and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth. So there's lots of descriptions of sharp two-edged sword. The Hebrews, we got that. In 1 Peter 5, 4, Revelation 1, 16, uh, which is what that is. And in 2, 12, and 16, uh, we have that. Um, in verse 12, <clears throat> this is the message from the one with the sharp two-edged sword. Um Repent your, verse 16, repent of your sin or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Okay, and then what you what you need to know is in, in chapter 19 of Revelation, what, this is what we're all trying to get going here. We kept track of all these things for a purpose. Um, 19, verse 21, at the end of tribulation at Armageddon, their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding the white horse. And the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. So remember the white horse, 
because uh, we're probably going to read about that tomorrow in um, Revelation 4. Oh, I'm sorry, Revelation 6. Maybe not tomorrow. Revelation 6. I do want to say it. Um, uh, as I watched, the Lamb broke the first of the seven seals in, on the scroll. Then I heard one of the four living beings say, with a voice like thunder, Come, I looked up and saw a white horse standing there. Its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head. He rode out to win many battles and gain a victory. That's not Christ. That's the Antichrist. Okay? So we have a white horse that Jesus comes on, and with thousands of his people behind him, us, on white horses, coming behind him. Okay? That is not the, uh, um, the person... That is not Jesus, because verse 3 of chapter 6 says, When the Lamb broke the second seal. So Jesus is breaking the seals. There's somebody else on the white horse going to uh, win with just a bow and uh, cause wars and stuff. That's the Antichrist. All right, we'll get to that when we get to chapter 6, okay? But don't confuse those two. Anyway, the point was with the sword of his mouth. He's coming with judgment with the actual truth, and nobody can fight against it. He's got the biggest club. Uh, he holds the keys to death in the grave, and those people will be thrown into hell, whether they want to or not. He seizes the victory. So the description of Christ is so very important. Um, and then we spend the rest of the time going over, and I, I think you should do this. I made a, a, uh, a grid here where we have, there's four churches mentioned, in today's reading. So there's seven churches. We'll get the other three tomorrow. So you, you continue this. All right. So on the left side is the complaints that Jesus has about them. And on the right side is what you get, your reward, if you're victorious, if you make it through, if you overcome. And we are overcomers. We've heard, I hear this word a lot in the Christian uh, circles. Uh, you're an overcomer. Well, you get a reward for, for uh, persevering through all of this. And then in the middle, each of the names of the churches it's what Jesus is saying about those people. So again, complaints, what Jesus says about them, and uh, the reward. And really, it typically starts with what Jesus says about them. He says, hey, I have this complaint about you. But if you can persevere, you're going to get these things. So make this because it makes it a lot easier to see what there is. And I'm going to go through these things, okay? So... We have the description of Jesus, and I want to show you something about how gentle Jesus is here. John, who we know to be um, favored by Christ, we know David was favored by God. So we have John here, who uh, is described by the other apostles as the apostle that Jesus loved. Okay, so John, Jesus comes to John and says, hey, I'm going to give you this revelation. And uh, John is just like, speechless he's 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 here's the the ocean waves of thunderous voice coming from christ and in verse 17 of chapter 1 jesus says this john john says when i saw him i fell at his feet as if i were dead daniel did the same thing okay um and others throughout the bible that that uh that had that um saw christ fell as if they were dead at his feet but Jesus laid his right hand on him, and he said, with exclamation point, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. Those are capital letters. So these are names in your God description and, and names for your list that you have. He is the first, and he is the last. Those are both capitalized. Those are names for him. I am the living one. Add that to the description. He is the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever. So it's obviously talking about Christ here. It doesn't say Jesus, but you know, Jesus is talking to John. John knows who Jesus is, but he, and John described Jesus in the way he did, and he's just in awe of what he sees, and he falls as if dead at Jesus' feet. So, and here's the other thing we need to get as we read Revelation. I'm sorry that the, the video is so long, but this is so very important. We get all of this. We are reading... As John is describing, and then the angel gives the testimony of all the things that are happening, and Jesus, we, we hear from Jesus as well. These are conversations and things that, that John sees. 
conversations that, is, that are going on and things that John sees, and he has to write this stuff down. So get this through your head that this is, some of these things happen very quickly. John sees this and now he's writing down everything he sees in his description of Christ. And But the thing is, before he could write it down, he sees, he turns and he sees Jesus and he just falls. He just can't believe what he's seeing. You have got to read this like that. Okay. All right. So he laid his right hand on him and said, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. Okay. So... He is gentle with John. He loves John. He loves you too. There's not any difference there, okay? And he, he uh, raises him up and says, you know, listen to these things, okay? So um, I wanted to say all of that. That's a, a small uh, uh, paraphrasing of all these things. Um, one thing I want to show is on uh, verse 18, it says, um, I hold the keys of death in the grave. Okay, he holds the keys of death in the grave. So in, at the great white throne judgment, um, verse 12 of chapter 20, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. Verse 13, the sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. They have to. Christ is all-powerful. He holds the keys to death and the grave. And all were judged according to their deeds. Verse 14. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. Okay? So, what an awesome thing that Jesus, at the very beginning of Revelation, is saying, Hey, John, I got you. I've got the keys to death and the grave. You will not be touched. You will not be harmed. I want you to give this message to, to the people. Okay. So now I want to get into some of the things on our list, um, and as you read through this, uh, you'll see it. So I'll, I'll go through this and paraphrase this as quickly as I can for the four churches. Ephesus, they have hard work, they're patient endurance, they don't tolerate evil people, and they examined false prophets and found that they are liars. They patiently suffered without quitting, and they hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans. So these, in Ephesus, uh, is in, this is in Turkey, uh, is, a, is a place where uh, they they have all these wonderful things about them. And then he says, but I have these complaints. What are the complaints? They don't love uh, Christ or each other like they did at first. And they and if they don't repent, he's going to remove uh, the church from them. The lampstand is the church. But if you do repent, you do finally overcome these things, I will give you the fruit from the tree of life. Okay, so we'll get to the tree of life at the end and what, and it feeds the, the tribes of Israel and gives us life eternal. Okay, then we get to Smyrna. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jesus knows about their suffering and their poverty. He knows about the blasphemy from those opposing them. But he says the Jews that are opposing them, their synagogue is a synagogue of Satan. And then he says, so, so the, there's really no, he doesn't say, come out and say, there's this complaint I have about you. No, what he's saying is, you guys are like split. You got, you got these things that are going on, but you got these people that are in there that are, that belong to Satan. Um, but you know what? If you, if you can come out of this on the right side, if you can overcome these things, I'll give you the crown of life. So, um, that's uh, chapter 2, verse 10. But in 1 Peter 5, 4, we, we learned about the crown of life. So there's another crown that you have. There's the first crown that we're talking about so far. There are other crowns, and we'll get to that. Um, you'll not be harmed by the second death. What's the second death? The second death is being thrown into the lake of fire. So the death gives death and the grave give up the dead, both great and small. So they had already died. And they're about to die again by being thrown into the lake of fire. That's the second death. Uh, let's uh, quickly look at that verse, um, chapter 20, um, verse 14. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. Boom. All right. So if, if they can overcome that, um, you will not be harmed by the second death. All right. Now, now we get to Pergamum. Pergamum is the city where the throne of Satan is, and they say the people of the church there are loyal to Jesus. So Jesus knows this in the middle of the city of Satan, that he knows they're loyal to him. Now, the complaints are this. They tolerate some of the people that trip them up, 
And if they don't do something about it, he's going to come suddenly and fight against them. The reward, if they can figure this out, is they can have the hidden manna that is hidden away in heaven that nobody knows where that angel don't know where it's at. So this is manna that is in heaven that we get to eat when we're in heaven. So it's hidden away at the moment. We also get a, a, a white stone with a new name on it that nobody knows but them. Okay, last one, Thyatira. Christ knows all the things they do. And we've talked about this. God knows everything. He knows your intentions. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what's going to happen. He's in the past, the present, the future, all at the same time. Okay? Um, he sees their love, their faith, their service, and their patient endurance. And he sees they're constantly trying to improve themselves. Steps in you. I mean, you're trying to improve yourself. Okay, so the problem is, is this complaint is they're permitting Jezebel, this prophetess that they have, that leads their servants astray. And there's, it's so bad that he, he talks for, you know, three or four verses, chapter 2, verses 20 through 23, about Jezebel and what he's going to do to the people that follow her and her. Okay, it's pretty scary. Um, so then he says, if you can overcome these things... I will give you the authority over all the nations of the world, and you will rule them with an iron rod. Okay, so uh, those things are are pretty crazy, um, and I wanted to read to you. Um, I think it's Revelation twelve five about the iron rod, and it says she gave birth to a son who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. So in that one, let's talk about uh, Israel giving birth to Jesus and Jesus is going to rule the world with an iron rod. Uh, he is the ultimate judge. He is the ultimate in, in force. Um, in the thousand year reign, we will all uh, reign with him. Now, I, I kind of wanted to wait until after we got through the, the other three churches uh, before saying this, but I, I want you to get this. Th this... All of this is really about the church age. So Jesus is giving John this revelation saying, in the first three chapters, it's a letter to the seven churches. And he's saying, hey, in this age, you got to describe all these bad things that are happening. I know the good things that are happening, but all these bad things and these complaints I have about people, but there's a reward. And the point is, all of this is about the whole church age. And there's there's some that said, hey, the, this is in order over the last 2,000 years, and we are finally in the church of Laodicea where we're, where we're all um, lukewarm and he's going to spit us out. And, you know, there's, there's some similarities to that thought. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fairly popular and people wouldn't uh, um, think about it. But the, the whole point is, hey, there's complaints that Christ has about us. Overcome these things. And you get this reward. Okay, so we have already overcome because we have accepted Christ. And we are forgiven of our sins. And we are to try to save these people who have these complaints about them. These are about the people who have turned their backs on Christ. They knew who Christ was and they turned their backs on him. And they're falling away. And it's like, hey, you got you to gotta realize, you got to make a choice. Are you choosing Christ? Are you going down this path or not? On the day they choose Christ, they start on that path of righteousness and they are found without fault. So don't let that pull you away. All right, so the whole point of all of this is in the first three chapters of Revelation. So I'm going to split this up. So you had, we, we're in the church age and then you have the rapture, okay? So here's the deal. In the first three chapters of Revelation, that's about the church, okay? And so I'm going to do this. And, we're, and then we'll wrap it up. Chapter 2, verse 7. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Okay? And then you have in, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 11. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. If you remember this, I told you this back in, in, in January and February uh, about the churches. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand what he's saying to the churches. Verse 17, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Okay, this is important. I wouldn't spend this time on it if it wasn't. Um, Thyatira, 
Verse 29, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. And then we have the church of Sardis. Verse 6, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. And then Philadelphia, verse 13, um, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. And then uh, we get into Laodicea, the lukewarm church. Anyone with, uh, verse 22, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Okay, so... We have the ears to hear and understand, and we listen to the Spirit, and we listen to what He is and understand what He is saying to us. That's what we're doing here, okay? And then we get to, if I can find it real quickly. Um, oops. Revelation 13, chapter 9. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Every word in the Bible is written specifically and for a purpose. There is no fault with anything in here. You spent all that time saying to the churches. You have all of this about the churches. And now we're here. And it says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. This is in the middle of the tribulation. In the tribulation. So the first three chapters are about the letters to the churches, the church age. You have the rapture, verses or chapters four, five, four and five. What's going on in heaven in chapters four and five, which we'll talk about. Chapters six through nineteen, that's the tribulation time. And in chapter thirteen, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. We're trying to rescue people out of the tribulation, or excuse me, through the tribulation. We aren't here. This is about them. So ears to hear and listen and understand. In that time frame, in the tribulation time frame, chapter 6 through 19, all hell breaks loose on earth. The Antichrist is ruling. Satan takes over and does awful, horrible things. And then the second coming happens. At chapter 19, chapter 20, we have the thousand-year reign of Christ. Um... So all these things I've been alluding to, we are touching on now. So chapter 20 is the thousand year reign of Christ with us. Um, uh, 19 verse 14, uh, the armies of heaven dressed in the finest pure white linen followed him on white horses. So the armies of heaven, we are the armies of heaven, okay? And then uh, chapter 20 is the thousand year reign. And then we get into <clears throat> 21 and 22. 21 is he makes a new uh, heaven and new earth. In the chapter 20, at the end of the thousand year reign, you have the great white throne judgment. And then 21, a new heaven and a new earth. And then 22, we have the water of life, the tree of life, and all the wonderful things that happen after that. That is what we're looking at. So tomorrow we'll finish the churches. Uh, so hopefully you make those that chart, okay? And then um, this should, the video should get a little shorter as we go. Okay, so that's the introduction to Revelation. I'll see you tomorrow.